Boys and girls, I have something super interesting to show you today. And this is where we have Amazon Lloyd developer. I mean, Amazon Q developer. And this is how it's going to work. Imagine this, you have your best friend forever, Mr. Hacker Lloyd, right beside you all of the time, helping you analyze your web application firewall logs, telling you, hey, if you've got duty, a threat detection service has a finding, what can we do about it? How can we get our evidences? And can Mr. Hacker Lloyd help you even remediate your findings inside your AWS environment. Are you ready for that? Let's go. So this is Amazon Q Developer and you can get this and access this directly from AWS. So this is available wherever you work. So it can be in your integrated development environments or in a command line, in a management console, GitLab Duo, Amazon Q and so on. So this is really powerful and you literally have your best friend forever, Hackaloy, right beside you, teaching you AWS, helping you and guide you throughout the entire process. And for today's tutorial, I'll be using Visual Studio Code with a plugin from Amazon Q. So all you have to do is select onto install and you will be able to get this up and running inside Visual Studio Code. So super easy to use. So you can see right here, I have Visual Studio Code running and I have Amazon Q plugin. So you can see the following. Ask you to review your code and see results in a code issue panel. So you can even ask more questions. Say for example, what can Amazon Q developer help me in areas of security? You hit enter on this and you can see the following right at the bottom with Claude Sonnet 4, so you can select on it. It can run, for example, code security analysis, secret detection, security best practices, infrastructure security, helping review your infrastructure as code, even going right down to your AWS environment, telling you, hey, this is a list of things I'm seeing, and I can even help you remediate that, which we'll see in a second. Now, before we go any further, the architecture of things is so important, because first of all, your best friend forever, Mr. Hackaloy, is going to access over into a service or server, and is fronted by Amazon CloudFront ACDN. And this CDN is also protected at the same time by web application firewall. And after which, it is going to be streamed over into EC2, where you have your get request, post request, and so on and so forth. And what's going to happen here is the ability to stream the web application firewall logs over into CloudWatch logs. And what's going to happen here typically is that it takes a lot of skills, a lot of time to analyze what's happening. And this is the magical part. This is where Amazon Q can really help us. So Amazon Q is going to be able to help us analyze into CloudWatch logs and say, hey, out of all these different events that are happening within your workload, we are identifying this set of IP addresses that are malicious, and we want to help you block that out. And Amazon Q can do all of this automatically and really quickly for you. And now before we go any further, kids, remember to put on your AWS thinking cap so that we can go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing you need to do is to authenticate into your AWS account through, say, for example, the terminal. So you can do a right click, new terminal. And all you have to do right now is enter, say, for example, AWS configure SSO. So hit enter on this and you have the session name. You have all this different information. So I can enter, say, for example, the session name is Hacker Loy. And then there's a pop up and I click on the following of confirm and continue and click allow access. Boom. Done. Request approved. So if I head back over into my Visual Studio Code, you can see the following right here. There are four AWS accounts available to you. So in my case, I am going to be using developer Loy, and I have the default client region. All right, so you can enter on that. I'll put format, hit enter on that. Profile name, I can say hacker Loy. hit enter on this, and then done. All right, so to verify that everything is working as intended, all you have to do is enter, say, for example, AWS S3 LS dash dash profile, hacker Loy. hit enter on that, and you can see the following. Okay, so this is the part where we can see, for example, whether we have those services, all right, that is up and running. Okay, so I enter the following S. So it should be for some S3, LS, dash dash profile, hacker loy. Okay, done. So we have managed to list now all of those S3 buckets. And we have, for example, in this case, we're authenticated, we're authorized, we can access the AWS account to help us run analysis. So right here, we're really excited. Let's go ahead and get started. Start up my CloudFront distribution as well as a stopped at EC2 instance in AP Service 1 with WordPress name. Use my profile of Hacker Alloy as I am already authenticated and authorized to access this services. All right, so go ahead and hit enter on this and let's see what Amazon Q developer can do for us. I'll help you start up your CloudFront distribution in EC2. All right, so you see the following. So I already have created and used Amazon Q before, and it's created a script for us, all right? So we can see the following. 
All right, we have Shell, we have Startup, AWS Resources, BAT. And all you have to do right now is click Run on this. And there's a bunch of information and commands already created to help us run all of that. So all I have to do right now is go ahead and run the bash script directly with full path to start AWS resources. And you can see the following, all right? We have EC2, describe instances, all right? Region AP service one with the profile hacker law and so on and so forth. And it's looking for an EC2 instance with the name of WordPress. And then once that is available for us, all right, you click run on this, it identifies it. And then what we will do right now is to help us run of that. So list or stop instances to find a WordPress one. All right, click start. And we have three of this. All right, so describe instances. So the one right over here, WordPress is going to be the target. So it has identified that as input for us over here. And we just have to click run on this. So as you're running through all this, continue to verify the commands that are going to be placed over into your AWS environment. The next up here is going to be listing CloudFront distributions. So I click run on this. I will go again to my AWS environment and say, hey, you have a specific CloudFront distribution ID. We have noted down the ID, we've saved it down, and we place it into the subsequent command to help us start up the CloudFront distribution. All right, so you can see the following over here. We have distribution-config.json, all right, and you can see the following. It's working on this to enable CloudFront, okay? So once it's ready, click Run. We'll be able to start up the CloudFront distribution, and the CloudFront distribution may take a little while to be enabled, okay? So right here, up the distribution, profile hacker loy, gives you the detail, gives you response back very quickly. And you can see right here, the EC2 now is started and a CloudFront distribution has been enabled and it's currently deploying. So I've logged right into the console and you can see right here with the distribution. And then you can see right here, it is currently deploying. Likewise, when I head over to the EC2 service, you can see WordPress has the instant state of running here too. So perfect, it's all up and running. Just give it a while for CloudFront distribution to start up to deploy. And you can see right here, we have website health check tool. So this is what is running on the EC2 and say, for example, we want to start spamming it with different type of malicious payload. Say, for example, I want to put single quote or one equal one, which is a form of SQL injection. I click check now. We got a block. All right. So the web application firewall is running and logging what is happening right here. Or say, for example, I want to put like a cross site script. I'll put like script over here and then I will say, for example, alert the following of hacked by Loy. All right. I put something like this. I hit enter on that. Once again, 403, error. The request could not be satisfied. Now on an actual website, you will be seeing tons of such requests and you want to be able to analyze them quickly and put a block to all of these IP addresses so that they can never ever access your services again, or at least for a temporary period of time. And of course, if I head over to AWS Web Application Firewall, you can see right here with the traffic overview, we have the rules, we have the associated AWS resources, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what's important is going under logging and metrics, and you can see right here, we have a logging destination of Amazon CloudWatch Logs Log Group with AWS WAF Logs WordPress. Now this is the super exciting part because you have literally Amazon Q developer like a hacker loy that is right beside you, helping you analyze what's going on and even helping you remediate this kind of bad IP addresses by blocking them out using a creation of an IP set and then attaching it automatically to your web application firewall rule. So right here, all you have to say, I would like to analyze the top offending IP address says, all right, in CloudWatch Logs group for my WordPress site. Help me analyze the past 30 minutes. I hit enter on this and you can see the following. Now we're working with Amazon Q developer. I help you analyze, all right? And it provides the instructions right here and verify, describe log groups, query, and so on. And you can see the following, it's working, okay? And then we can now describe log groups in AP Service one. Checking WAF logs, which likely contain WordPress traffic and IP address. Click start on this. So most likely we would have to use US East one because that is where the destination is. So I want to enter the following, use US East one where the CloudWatch logs, log groups recite. All right, hit enter on this. And you can see the following is working once again to help us check out where all of this. Now with that, I click run and I can see the following. Okay, 
So we have one specific here, AWS WAF Logs WordPress. It can also do the troubleshooting automatically for you, but since I already know where the log destination is, I can just simply run it for us, okay? So we click run for this. And you can see the following, starting CloudWatch Insights Query to analyze top offending IP addresses from WordPress WAF Logs. Click run on that. Getting the results. Running a more detailed query to get IP addresses and their request counts with blocked actions. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Running query to get all IP addresses. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So you can see right here, total requests are four requests, two blocked requests that you saw earlier, which is the SQL injection of cross site scripting. All right, so you can see the following information right here. What is the offending IP address? I would like to block that offending IP address. Can you help me place the offending IP address into an IP set and add that into my WAF web ACL. Hit enter on this. All right, so we want to uncover the offending IP and automatically just block it out. Getting the specific IP addresses, they were blocked by WAF. So I click run on this. Click run again to get the query results. And you can see right here, all right, we have the following information. It's all available and accessible, all right? And it's all analyzed very quickly for us, all right? So that we can add in the protection very quickly, okay? All right, try a different approach to get a raw log entries. So it even reads and understand the results. And then if it has to, it will try and attempt other methods for you. Perfect. So it found the offending IP address 121.624.4106 from Singapore. So that's exactly where I'm coming from. All right. So this IP was attempting SQL injection and cross-site scripting attacks on cmd3.php. Now I'll create an IP set and add it into your WAF web ACL. Click run on this. Mm-hmm. All right, so it's auto-correcting itself. If it's not giving the right input, all right, the right parameter, it will check, it will evaluate, and it will give you a new form of parameter, a new form of complete command. It's working right now, all right. It's putting the new IP blocking rule as highest priority. All right, click run on this. So we're updating it. All right, so you can see right here, parameter validation fail invalid length for parameter description value and so on. Updating the web ACL with the corrected configuration. So it's correcting itself, correcting the configuration for you. Okay, perfect. So it states the following. I've successfully identified the offending IP address, the attack details, created the IP set, and then now we've updated the web access control list all right, it's now permanently blocked at the WAF level. Any future requests from this IP will be immediately blocked before reaching your WordPress site. So this is amazing. Let's go ahead and verify the configuration in the console. Right here, I'm back into the WAF Web ACL and I can hit over into rules. And in rules, I can do a refresh over here. And let's see whether we have the new rule being added for us. Click on the rules again. Done. Block malicious IPs. I clicked on this. This will show us the IP set. And this is it. It's all done fully automatically for us. Now I hit back over in the color Linux and I try to run any form of command. So even trying to access the site, I do a refresh of the site. I click a resend. Boom, 403. We are now permanently blocked. This is absolutely amazing. Imagine your best friend forever, Hackaloy, can now live in your IDE through Q Developer. Go ahead, try it out. Let me know how it goes.